We get it, we totally understand that doing video analysis for your tennis is really scary and intimidating. But I've got great news for you. It's kind of like jumping out of an airplane. Here's what I mean. And then people start going out of the airplane. And you go, and the guy walks you up to the end of the thing, and you're standing, and your toes are on the edge, and you're looking out down to death. <laughs> and they say, on three. And they say, one, two, and he pushes you on two because people grab on three, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? And you go, <laughs> and you fall out of the airplane, and in one second, you realize that it's the most blissful experience of your life. You're flying. You see, the truth is, once you make that initial jump out the door, it's incredible. Once you have the awareness and the ability to see exactly what's happening, your potential for improvement skyrockets. You finally know what you're doing for the very first time. Plus, you get the benefit of confirmation when you get better. You can see, oh, here's before and here's after. So it's incredibly inspiring and, and motivating. So not only is it not scary, it's the best thing you'll ever do for your tennis. So let's jump right into the gear you need to do it as easily as possible. When it comes to cameras for video analysis for your tennis, it's probably way easier than you think it is. There's a timeless camera quote that says, the best camera is the one that's with you. And that's absolutely the case when it comes to video analysis. In 2018, which is when we're when we're recording this, it's unbelievably easy to do video analysis. We can use uh, phones, we use tablets, uh, you can use an iPhone, you can use an Android phone, it really doesn't matter. If you've purchased your phone in the last two, three years, then it's got a good enough camera to do pretty impressive video analysis. If you're wondering what we actually use, Kevin here has a, a brand new, as of 2018, iPad Pro, and we'll, we'll link to actually everything that we use in the description down below of this video. But the iPad Pro has really impressive frame rates and clarity. And so when you see us working with our students, that's what we're using. But don't get hung up on this. Don't go out and buy something. That's the bottom line. Whatever you have in your pocket right now is more than good enough to do great analysis. The next thing you need is something to hold your phone or your iPad, tablet, whatever it is that you're using. And for that, you need some kind of tripod. And what we literally have here today is kind of a semi-fancy version of a tripod. You don't need anything this nice or beefy or expensive. In fact, just a little mini cell phone tripod will totally get the job done. Just please don't prop your phone up against like the, the net post or against the back fence. Invest $10 in something that will actually hold it steady and hold it at a good angle, which we'll talk about in a minute. So if you go to the description right below this video, we'll give you a couple of suggestions on Amazon. You can literally get, you can get a decent cell phone tripod for literally like 14 or 15 bucks on Amazon, probably around the same price at Walmart's or Best Buy or whatever you have close by. But you need something to keep it steady so that you can really control the angle, and you can really control the framing, and that's what we'll be talking about right after this. How you set up the camera and what the camera can see is really critical. If you get this wrong, then you can get footage that's really difficult to be useful at all. It's very difficult to compare to anything else. And so we'll take you through a couple of kind of best practices here. First of all, let's talk about framing. It's really, and what framing means is how much of the player fills up the screen. Basically, you want to utilize as much of your screen real estate as possible. That way you get as much detail about what your body is moving and what your racket is doing. A huge mistake that players make is they put the camera like against the net post. It's super far away from the player. It's not an angle that's very useful and the player just looks like they're a mile away. And so what Megan's doing here is setting up the iPad so that the bottom edge of the frame has just a little bit of space between Kevin's feet and the bottom. And the top of the frame is just a little bit of space between where the topmost point of rackets uh, of Kevin's racket is moving and the top edge of the, of the frame. So that way Kevin and his swing are utilizing as much of the frame as possible and you'll get as much detail as possible, which makes it as helpful as possible. So as far as angles are concerned, with brown strokes, we're either looking directly to the side, right 90 degrees to the side of contact, or another angle we'll sometimes use is directly behind, uh, which would be exactly behind where Kevin is making contact. For serves, Go ahead and hit a couple of serves, Kevin. 
And same framing applies here. We're looking for the bottom of the frame to be just a little bit of space between Kevin's feet and the bottom edge and contact just below the top edge of the frame. On serves, we almost always use directly behind contact. Occasionally, we'll look to the side, especially if we're looking for a point of contact uh, where contact is being made with the, with the ball. Uh, that's especially useful to look from the side, but usually we're looking from, from a back angle, which really shows the racket drop, trophy pose, and contact point follows through really, really well. But either directly to the side or directly, directly behind are most useful for ground strokes and serves. For volleys, we're almost always looking directly to the side, and for overheads, we're usually looking directly behind. But one way or another, you probably want to be 90 degrees to the side, towards the dominant side of the stroke, or directly behind, looking through the point of contact. If you have one of those two angles, and you've, you've framed it reasonably well, then you're going to have tons of information and tons of knowledge about what you're doing, which is exactly the whole point of analysis. Last but not least, let's talk about software. What app should you use or do you need an app? Well, if you're just doing point play analysis and you're just recording full motion video, then you don't need anything special. Just go ahead and use the app that's built into your tablet or built into your phone, and that's totally fine. You can review point play really easily that way. If you're gonna be doing technique analysis, then I recommend you get something special that's kind of designed just for that. And your phone might have baked in some kind of slow motion functionality and that's that's totally fine but with an app like coach's eye which is the app that we use you've got all kinds of extra functions like being able to draw lines measure angles and there's a little kind of wheel at the bottom where you can go frame by frame in really nice detail and also do side by side comparisons really easily as well so again the app is coach's eye we're not affiliated with them at all this is not a sponsored video or anything it's just the app that we've been using and we prefer so we'll, we'll link to that down in the description of this video as well. Highly recommend you check it out. They've, just, they've got a free download and then some extra features for a small amount after that. So do it. I hope that you, this has inspired you and given you the action steps to actually jump in and do it. If you'd like a guide that shows you step-by-step -step what to do, you can go to easyvideoanalysis.com or that link will be in the, the uh, description down below as well. If you have any questions about video analysis, leave them in the comments section and be sure to leave a like if this video is helpful to you.